Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, the Great I Am, that I Am, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Yes. Father, we thank you for another opportunity this morning, Father. We thank you, come take control of my words, Father. Take control of me right now. Let it be all about you and not about me, Father. Let everybody live here today, Father, gaining something and coming back here next week not being the same. Father, we glorify your name, we praise your name, we worship your name. In Jesus' name we all say. Amen. Good morning, family. Good morning. Um, I actually asked for this opportunity to speak today. I never do that. But I, I needed to. I, and the beautiful thing about having your church, I told you before, I have equity in this church. But having your church is we don't have a pastors that want to hold on to this thing and uh, 90 years old and still doing it. You call them, you tell them, they'll be more than happy to give you the opportunity. Uh, why I wanted to do that was um, before the event, we came asking for prayers and asking the church to bless the event. And the way I was raised, my great grandmom raised me, and one of the things she used to say it, is that a child that is thankful will eat tomorrow. So when you are grateful, you will eat the next day. Maybe even better than you ate yesterday. So, uh, just coming up here for five minutes to tell the church thank you wouldn't have been enough. So I needed a whole sermon to do. Because the thank you I want to give is not really saying just the thank you. It's trying to make people understand why my family and I are so blessed. Because it's very important. The title of this message actually is Ordinary People. When I first moved to the United States, I moved there in 87. My dad was pissed. He was angry because he didn't want me to leave. He and I were very close just before I left. And I, you know, I knew so many things he wanted out of me. So when I moved, he was pissed. A year later though, I think he had got over his anger and he wrote me a letter. And it was a very powerful letter. One thing that stuck to me at that, in that letter was, America is a country where ordinary people do great things. And it stuck to me since 1988, that letter, it stuck to me. And the more we got into this foundation, and the things that God has connected my family and I to, I started understanding that the power that I, Osara Loba, and my family have to change so many things was that even though we are ordinary people, we could make a difference. Amen. And what I found in this church and what happened last week, Saturday, we are ordinary people getting together to make a difference. Amen. So Saturday, we are ordinary people that got together to do a great thing. Amen. And not only did we get together to do a great thing, we had fun doing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, one thing we got to understand as a people is this. You can have fun doing great things. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be difficult. Let me, let me start giving, go to my opening verse because you see, the interesting thing is when I was sitting down here, I come here, I put all this together, I was empty. Empty video till I, I was empty. I didn't know how. I always know how I'm going to put my message together. But this one I wrote, but I didn't even know how I'm going to put it together. But I'm just coming. I'm, I'm going to flow with it. Amen. So you guys bear with me. Amen. This he says, and do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. You see, we are all ordinary people. But the thing that we got to understand is this. What makes you great is doing extra. It's the extra that you do that makes you extraordinary. And that extraordinary is what's pleasing in the sight of God. God has given us the power to do anything we want to do. 
But what God is looking for is that person that will do the extra. You see, that's why I say I wasn't this message. See, this just pop up in my head. Amen. You know, so I don't have this verse, but if you have it, find it. I can't find it. I'm not a Bible scholar like you guys. <laughs> Jesus told the parable when it was when the, 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 the master was traveling and he gave his uh was it his servants money things to invest? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You know that story. I know it's there, but I don't know <laughs> where is that. And one of them went and buried it. Yes. Right. Yes. So I don't want you to talk about that now. I spent your money. <laughs> one of them went to invest it. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what the third one did. You guys know the story. Yeah. You see, what I'm trying to make you understand is this. Every single one of us have a gift mm -hmm. that we can use in blessing each other. But it depends on what you choose to do with that gift that becomes a blessing. You can take that gift and keep it like, uh -uh. if I don't do this now, God will talk about, ah, uh, the mess up is, uh, -uh. I ain't even go bother with that. Yes. Or you can take that gift and invest it in your fellow man. Yes. And then that your fellow man too, invest it in his fellow man. Yes. And in his fellow man. We keep talking about why we are not growing as a people. We have to look deeper in ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you guys an interesting story. God helped me to the other things popping up in my head. It was not here. 1999. I traveled. I don't want to put any country out there. And I went to a church. I was at the church for a couple of weeks because while I was there. And they had a big gala. Same thing we had coming up. And you see the church, the people that hold this church together are the poor people that they walk miles to get to the church. But you can take care of people. They pay their tithes out of that little $50 they make. They dedicate it. I know that. But then they had an event like that gala. See, I, I'm from America, so I'm a baller as far as they're concerned. I, you know, I can, I'm one of the big boys. And they invited people. And everybody paid 2000 I don't know what the dollar amount is, but let me make it like $200. Everybody paid $200 for their ticket. But see, most of those people sitting in that church did not even make $200 a month. I don't know if you guys know where I'm going with this. Most of the people sitting in that church did not even make $200 a month. And it was out of their money. Those times that they pay, that they hosted that party for the elites. So when you got there, I looked around, and everybody that I saw were the big shots in the town, and the people that were carrying the weight of the church could not make it in there. Wow. You guys, you see, I tell you people all the time, before you join the church, hate me, love me, you gotta think. Every church you see a Bentley park outside, keep walking. Mm -hmm. I said it, if you don't like it, my name is Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> keep walking. Why I'm saying that is this. I'm saying this not because I'm here to glorify my church. I don't do that. Anybody knows me, no, I don't do that. But something powerful happened in this church. One of the major problems we were trying to deal with before the gala was to make sure our people yes. that were giving $10 to the foundation, $20 to the foundation, but we knew they were going through a little. How do we get them in? That's a church. That's what the church is supposed to do. Yes. Now, I want you to pay your money, and I need the money, but I'm being honest with you this morning. Yes. Not people that have, because there are people that have it that I just don't want to pay. That's a fact. That happens in church too. Let's not make a fool of ourselves. There are some people that can afford it that just don't want to pay. But there are some people that you know just don't have to have it. But those people, let me explain to you. I love this foundation. I will take your check. $20,000, God bless you. I will take it. I will pray for you. But the people I cherish the most 
are the people that give that ten dollars, twenty dollars to this foundation. Why I say that is because they are consistent. That's what's going to make it grow. Yeah. We're not working for us. We're working for God. Yeah. Something interesting happened. This thing that we did, we were going to abandon a lot of stuff. Because the money that I was confident about how we were going to build that park. Because I had a big account that paid me enough money and I had everything on paper. Or how it was going to be, 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 be built. And by my calculation, I was going to build it in eight years. Because I was making that kind of money from that account. And the COVID hit. Yes. And reality hit. Yes. That money wasn't coming like that no more. So my eight year plan that I done, that program all don't change. And I was going crazy. But the money did one thing. I was able, it was two acres of land, and we were able to secure that land with that money. So that nobody go in there to try to steal it. People come with crazy amount of what they want to buy it for. And I, my mentality was just like, I'm getting frustrated. But something interesting happened. And I talked to one of our one of our ministers in this church that told me, why are you giving up? It's not for you. God gave you an assignment. So why are you frustrated about not being a building? But you know what I think happened? I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not religious like a lot of people. But I think God did that to humble me. He did that to humble me. So you start thinking it's all about you. You, you bought it like that. You got money. You can build this park. This park is not about you. He, he humbled me to understand, to make me understand that I need the ordinary people. Because the park is being built for the ordinary people. Amen. So God is not going to give me any power over those people where I can go back and tell them, oh, who are you talking to? I built you a park. You didn't build nobody nothing. That's right. That's right. This was built by God and the ordinary people. Like my father said, ordinary people do great things. What makes you great? You see that man on TV, you see that man in the Mercedes Benz, and you are living a life that you wish you could have. You don't want to know the life these people are living. Don't, don't see people and get excited about, whoa, he. You don't want to know. When some of these people die, you start hearing the stories of the kind of life they what they sacrifice for what they're living, you don't want it. See, why I'm here this morning is I'm trying to make you guys understand why God has blessed us like he has. Because I know I'm blessed. Ain't nobody can fool me about that. Amen. Amen. I know where I come from. I know where I was when I, I know when, when, when I was sleeping in the car. I know. I remember those stories. So I can't come up here now and start pretending like I know the smooth sailing wasn't smooth sailing. I pay the price for where I'm at today. That's why I'm not apologizing for it. But what I'm trying to make you understand is this. What has helped me to be able to get that blessing? And there's a secret that is not an open secret. What has helped me is giving. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. You cannot say you are a Christian and you don't understand the power of giving. If you do not understand the power of giving, then you're in the wrong place. You need a re-education of what Christianity is. See, it's, it's where you see me coming to church now talking about giving. People are like, this boy don't. No, I'm trying to make you understand what has worked for me. My secret. See, I thought you guys can see me looking good. Let me say something. The beautiful thing about America is you can look good all you want. So long as you keep your credit over 700, you're living good. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever told you that. I will tell you. I bet you a lot of those people you see Bradley, they got as much money as you do. But they got good credit. They understand the importance of paying bills. Yeah. <laughs> so when you see people living, you got to make sure you understand as a church. 
If you do not understand the power of giving, yes. and you come pray all the time, mm. I'm all over the place. There's something. Gandhi says something. Uh, please um, don't kill me, please. Ashley, we're going to be everywhere every day. Um, 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 Mata, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, or whatever his name is. Did yes. you saw that? If you can go to that, I want them to see. He said the simplest acts of kindness are by far more powerful than a thousand heads bowed in prayer. You could pray. You see, if somebody comes to you and says they got a problem, and you got a hundred dollars in your pocket, and that problem is twenty dollars, you are lit. Excuse me, Pastor. You are crazy for telling them, let's pray. You're making a fool of God. Because God has given you the power to do the blessing. Yes. So when they come to you and you tell them, let's kneel down and pray, yes. you're making a mockery of your faith. Because God actually probably sent them to you because he knows that blessing is in your pocket. We need to stop fooling ourselves about this. That's not how church is supposed to work. And the interesting thing about churches that are willing to do it the right way don't grow as fast as those big churches. Because right. our people want to be lied to. They want to make the church that will make you feel good. Mm -hmm. Church is an entertainment. Yeah. The entertainment part of church has taken part the learning part of church. Mm -hmm. The church can teach us about giving. giving. That's right. yeah. Because there's the secret. The Bible tells you. The Bible tells you all these things. Yes. It says, Matthew 10, 8 says, Freely you have received, freely give. Yeah. I keep telling the problem is I tell people the biggest mistake they made is letting me know how to read this Bible. Because I've learned how to read it and I understand the Bible, at least from the education the British taught me, I can read enough to understand what some of these things means. Because if the Bible is telling you you've freely been blessed, you cannot charge people to bless them. How do you get something free and then you want to charge people for it? We have to understand how it works. There has to be joy in giving. I remember I used to laugh at one church at that time. You know, it was a Catholic church in Nigeria. Every time I go to a church and it's time for offering, they start singing this song, um, God loves a cheerful give and give all you got. I'm like, see these people, they just... <laughs> I'm being honest. <laughs> Why is it that it's that will give you after you sing that song? <laughs> but now I understand. Yes. I understand yes. that you have to be happy with giving. Yes. Now, be, be, at the same time, you shouldn't let people abuse you because people do. But the kind of giving you give is a lift up giving. Mm -hmm. You don't give people things that makes them stay there. You give them things that lift them up yes. and move them on their way. Yes. Because if you don't do that, you go concentrate on this person for so long, while the blessings that should be going to other people, you're spending so much on this person. So you have to teach this person to lift themselves up. Because you got work to do. Yes. And there are more people who go bless. Yes. I ain't got time you gotta stay here playing with you. So you gotta get up. If you go to go to school, you gotta go to school. How much you gotta pay for your school? We gonna pay for we gonna find that money. You don't have no money, we gonna find that money. We're gonna raise that money. Yes. But you gotta go to school. Because as soon as you graduate, I'm going to the next one. Yes. Because some people hold you so much because you're not gonna reach the final purpose that God has for your life. Your life is to go bless so many people. If you spend one time fighting with this person that has refused to get up, because it's one thing to bless you, it's another thing for you to want to be blessed. You see, you don't pray to God. I tell people all the time, I think I've said this in this church before. Do not always pray for God to bless you. You might not understand me, I'm going somewhere with that. People always sit down, you kneel down, you spend hours here, kneel down, come to the altar, keep praying, God bless me, God bless me, God give me this, God give me that. You pray the wrong prayer. Let me tell you why. 
Because when you do that prayer, you're all in yourself. You all asking God what you can get, what God should give you. When you come pray, pray say, God, make me a blessing. Amen. Because if you say, God, make me a blessing, you have no choice but to bless you. Because you have to be blessed to be a blessing. Yeah. So you're already telling God, I want to use this thing. Yeah. I want to use this thing to make yeah. people more. I'm not asking you to give me this thing for me. I'm telling you, God, make me a blessing. Yeah. So I can go out there and bless people. Yes. Yes. If you keep saying, God, bless me, bless me, bless me. No. No. You've been all in yourself. Yeah. God wants soldiers. They want people he can use. Right. Are you going to volunteer for that? You're not volunteering for that when you're asking God to bless you. You're volunteering for that when you're asking God to make you a blessing. That's it. That's it. That's it. So the way I've always lived my life, people always think I'm richer than I am, and it's good. Keep thinking that way. <laughs> hey, Trump has made it, oh, I call his name out. Huh? He's made it by telling people he's rich. But well, anyway, found out the man probably you probably got more money than he do, but he's loud about talking about his rich. But what I'm saying is this: if people telling me, thinking I'm blessed like that, I really am blessed like that. But what I'm trying to make you understand is there's a secret behind it. Yeah. When you give, you never lack. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When you give, you never lack. Yeah. And when you prepare people. I tell people all the time, I talk about the story with Doris and I. People do not understand our story. And people see us now, it's funny to them. I remember when I was pushing, say, no, this is what you, no, we're going to finish school. We're going to do this. We're going to do all that. Yes, yes. You know? And we push, and we push, and we push. People do not understand what she went through to get a degree and become a teacher and become, we even want teacher of the year and all that stuff. People don't understand Amen. the talent that's sitting in front of you. Amen. For her to get to that stage, people do not understand. But you know what's so interesting? I, 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 I'm doing this, all this project, this project, so many projects. At times when I give her a check for the mortgage, it's short. I just drive it short. That's all I got. That's all I want to pay. I ain't going over trouble with it. You figure it out. She ain't never come back and asked me to talk about the mortgage shop this morning. You know why? Because I invested in her making herself better. You guys got to understand, when you invest in your wife or your husband, you're doing it for you and the family. Because there's going to be a time when you're going to need that investment. That's right. So when your child, your wife wants to go to school, don't make it seem like it's a problem. Invest in it. When your husband wants to do something to make his life better, invest in it. Because eventually, there's going to be one day that that investment is going to come. And you have to think like that. Because God has put us here for a reason. Yes. We are ordinary people, but God wants us to do great things. Great things. Amen. You have to think like that. When you think like that, people call you arrogant because you know the power you carry. Everybody that was involved with this gala didn't know what we went through. It was night and day. You get frustrated. You might be walking night and day. Because you want your come out right. But the bottom line is this. Then you swear you're never going to do this again when this is over. <laughs> <laughs> Say, God, just get me through this. <laughs> but you know what thing is this? I found out, because one thing I do is I read a lot of books about a lot of great people. See, I tell people, if you think you have greatness in you, study great people. Yes. I'm not rich, I'm talking about rich people, I'm talking about great people. Great people. From the Bible, there are great people in the Bible, study them. Great people in life that you think are great, study them. And then you understand how they live their life. The crazy thing about that event, as crazy as it was, I'm sick. Because as soon as we all finish the excitement, everybody's dancing. Uh, 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 what do you call that song? Oh, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the right. So I was. <laughs> and I saw people jumping, having so much fun. 
Just two hours ago, I swore I wasn't going to do it anymore. <laughs> right there, I started planning for next year. <laughs> I started calculating all what we're going to cut up next year. <laughs> but that's what it takes to be great. They ask, this, the, you see, you have to be, ex, the, the work that it takes to be great, you have to take it with so much passion. You have to put so much into it. Yes. You have to get frustrated by it. You have to go crazy by it. But then as soon as you achieve it, let's do it again. Yes. Yes. That's greatness. Yes. Ordinary people doing great, great things. things. Amen. Amen. So at times when people talk about that ordinary man, you get upset. No, we are ordinary people. Yeah, that's right. But we've given the power to become extra ordinary. ordinary. Yeah. And that power is that extra that you do. That's right. Now you see this chair be here forever. This chair is not supposed to be there. It's blocking the way from all of us going this way. So because of that, everybody go this way. Because the chair is just right here. If you guys can excuse me, I'll put it right here. Now then, so it's at times you know, you got to see some things. You see this chair is right here. Yes. We all see this chair right here. Mm -hmm. We know it does not belong there. So instead of seeing what we're going to do to make sure this chair goes where it belongs, we all go this way, to go around the problem. See, what makes you extraordinary is the extra that you did by moving it back where it belongs. And you just became extraordinary. So all of us that walk by here, we're ordinary. We're ordinary. It's the person that is willing so do the extra by just putting the thing in place. Is what makes you extra. God has built you to be extra, ordinary. My question is, do you want it? We got, we got to understand most of these things. The question is, do you want it? Let me place on you, when you are trying to be extraordinary, the most obstacle you're going to get are from the people that should be your support. If you expect it yes. to get support, you see people get disappointed because you expect your support because I've been so nice to this person. I've done this. Oh, this is family. This is what it's supposed to be. Right. And you get disappointed and you get dejected. But that's not the way it's supposed to go. The people that are going to help you are other ordinary people. Amen. God is going to use people. When, when uh, Mr. Carl was telling me about how we got to move forward with some of this stuff, I had no idea what we were going to do. But everything just came in place. This gala thing came in place for three months. We didn't plan last year, I thought we were going to do gala. It popped up. Even after I started, I'm like, what did we get ourselves into? <laughs> because the interesting thing, why I'm making this understanding, make people understand is this. The people you were counting on to buy those tickets were the ones that didn't buy the tickets. The people that were buying tickets were people you have no idea where they came from. I had a customer, I woke up one morning, I was so frustrated because of this guy thing was moving slow. I think I even put it in the, in the team group thing how frustrated I was. And that morning, something hit me. I have this customer that we've been taking care of his house for, for a minute in uh, North Miami. And so I've never done nothing like that before. And something just popped up in my head, saying, you know what, Six, 5 a.m. in the morning, I'm like, how do you send a customer a message at 5 a.m.? So I was waiting with my phone. To seven years, so I have to <laughs> and that seven years, that time, I didn't know. I didn't know the time moved so slow, you know. But something just told me to send him a message, and I don't know why. And thank God, I acted on it because I'm too proud to do certain things. And I sent him a message. I wrote a little message about what we're doing, about the program, and what we're trying to do. And I put a video of the orphanage, the before and the after of the orphanage video. And I put it and I sent it to him. Now you all religious people like this. The Holy Spirit sent me to that man. I don't, because me and him, we don't, we don't ball like that. 
It's just a customer. We got home as soon as at five, uh, 5 p.m. that evening. 5 p.m. that evening, I got a text message. Doris was just pulling up in the yard, and the text message was like, uh, come over to my house. I was like, Doris, you can't get in, right? We got a ghost. This man said, come to his house. I don't know what he wants. And we drove to the man's house. And we got there. The man said, I'm busy. I can't come. Here, $500. Wow. 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 Ordinary people yes. do great things. I don't know this man like that from heaven. He's just a customer. Yes. But at that time, at that moment, I acted on what I was asked to do. Yes. I called a total stranger technically. And that stranger was able to give $500. Yes. But you see why it's beautiful to make you guys understand. And I said I wasn't going to say this so that nobody take advantage of us next year. But if you take advantage of us, it's between you and your God. Yes. What we did, when we got back, those five hundred dollars were five tickets. Yes. Yeah. I didn't keep it as a donation to the foundation. We sat down and looked at the list of people that have invested in this foundation, $10, $20, that we know they couldn't afford it. And guess what? We gave our five tickets. Yes. That's what you do. Amen. The church! Yes. I don't know if the church wanted me to tell you this, but they gave me a microphone, so. <laughs> the church bought tickets! A lot of tickets, I don't want to tell you because people are going to be waiting there and say, Pastor, if they're waiting there and say, I know the people that got tickets for this year. Let me know. I'll be done. But I'm just saying it because we have to make people understand what the church is. I just told you about a church that had people sitting down that could, couldn't come in. They couldn't come in. They were the ones that probably swept and arranged the place. They arranged the whole thing, but they couldn't sit with the big folks to eat. And that's the first time I'm, when I get the messed up in that church, they gave me a microphone. No. Talk about, oh, I don't want to call myself, man. My, 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 mom, my, mom, my mom almost died that day. She was praying as soon as they gave me that microphone. I just gave them a little piece of my mind, you know what I was thinking? It was only like 30 seconds, but I think they got the message. <laughs> For the next two weeks, I heard about it. My mom reported me to everybody that came to the house that I went to embarrass her in church. I told them they embarrassed me for taking me there. Because we got to understand a church responsibility is to pull these people up. Any church that you go to are they only the pastor and his family doing good. There's a problem. You got to look at the church when you go. You say, I, I, give, you, I give you one or two weeks or maybe a month. Because at times you have to go see what's going on. You know, don't just, you know, from the outside, go for a month or two. After you stay a month or two, you know, praise the Lord, you find you a new church. Uh, because your job is to pull your people up. Yeah. Listen, guys, those of you who are the gala, do you see how pretty people look in this church? Listen, we need to start advertising some men need to start coming to this church. We got some pretty women in this church. But Doris is not here, so I can talk like this. I, I just can watch her, I will go over and explain myself. But listen, we got some pretty women in this church. Because what happened is, listen, I mean, my, I listen, some of my friends were like, who's that? Hey, 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 she taken, you came too late. <laughs> but what I'm trying to make you understand is this. As Christians, we need to get to God and look, feel good about ourselves. And come out looking good like that once in a while. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have an event where we come out like that, dressed pretty, and feel good about it. I mean, there are people I couldn't recognize that day. You have to like, Sister, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> Every church needs an opportunity to make their people feel good about themselves. Yes. Every church should have a gala net like that. Yes. Every church should do it. But it should be done for a good reason. Yes. It should be done, you should party with a purpose. You shouldn't do it to buy the pastor's new Mercedes Benz. That's not what the gala is for. The gala is for raising people up. 
I look at them like, wow, my people are so beautiful. They felt good about themselves. Yes. You know, and it gives me joy like we were able yes. to put people in that environment. Yes. That's what church is. Yes, yes. We need to be the church that redefines the mentality of what people are thinking is church. People are giving churches a bad name because they've created this bad taste in people's mouth. But the church is going to rise up and take the church back to its rightful place. Amen. It's not going to be popular. It's not going to be easy. Pastors are going to hate you. So like you now, you can't invite me to every church. If you invite me to every church, you know, I mean, you know, I, mean I never know what's going to happen. <laughs> and people understand that. I have a pastor that didn't come there that day because I won't go to his church. But people want him. So it, do, do you want him in your church? Have you listened to him? <laughs> so he understands that. But what I'm saying this is this. We are all here for a reason. God put us here for a reason. Amen. As a Christian, the earlier you find your purpose in life, the earlier you start living. Amen. You cannot look at what... Listen, some of the things that happen to you, don't look at it as a cause. It's a blessing. Like I said, with everything my father went through and who he was, this vision that you see me carrying today was my dad's vision. It's not mm. mine. Mm. But some of this vision that God has given you, you are not the one that's supposed to take it to the promised land. Mm. My God. He just gave it to you. It. Moses did not get the people to the promised land, right. but he was the one that God gave the vision. Yes. yes. So every time we think we are the ones that are supposed to carry everybody across, no. At times, at times, the hero is not the one that brings the trophy home. The hero is the one that took the first punch. That said, let's fight. And he might not be able to be alive to see the result. But he's the one that started the fight. That's the hero. But at times when the person that brings the trophy, we put him in the head and we glorify him, he's not the hero. So what I'm trying to make people understand is this. This vision that everybody keeps saying, oh, Sarah, oh, Sarah, oh, Sarah, there's nothing special about me. Wow. The man that started this vision that lived for it. Even in his, on his tombstone, what he wanted us to write on his tombstone is he, served, he lived to serve, uh, no, no, he, stri he strove to serve his fellow men. That's what he wanted. He didn't want to, oh, this was a great man. He just wanted, his strove, his whole life was lived to serve other people. As Christians, our life is to be to serve other people. Why we have some of these issues is we are always thinking about what I can benefit. If you live your life thinking about what can I give, you will never lack. And you don't take advantage of people while you give it. There are people that just walk up to you and you know they don't have. And you say, how can I sow into this thing? I thought you were reluctant to like, I can't take it. Take it. Because you don't want to block that blessing. God has instructed them to give that to you. Amen. Take it. Now, if you like them so much, if they give you $50, maybe next time you see them, you want to give them something, give them $100. But that seed that they planted, take it. If somebody come say, I'm giving the church five dollars, and you know that's all he got, the church cannot turn it down. That's right. Because you can block people's blessing. That's right. It's giving. Listen, people are great today. I don't know where my head is going there, but I'm going to use it. People are great today because there are people around them that help them get where they need to go. Whatever we achieve, I don't know where this park is going to go, but wherever we achieve today, we're not achieving it because of us. We're achieving it because of you guys. There's another story in the Bible. Actually, I'm sorry. It's not there. But you guys know the story. If you guys don't know the story, then you need to start reading your Bible more. <laughs> there was this uh, pastor. Somebody can help me. There was this cripple that had that Jesus was somewhere preaching. And he needed to get to Jesus. But there was so much crowd that he couldn't get to Jesus. So they had to climb on the roof. 
and then put him through the roof to get down there to get to Jesus. What I'm trying to make you understand is this. The man was a cripple, right? He needed people to carry him through that roof and put him down to get that blessing. Anything we do and achieve is because of ordinary people we are able to lift to sorrow and down this up and carry us to the front of that park and say, this is what we did. So it's not about us. It's about the people that are willing to lift us up. And what I'm trying to make people understand is this. Like I tell people, our relationship with this church is not by accident. I don't make apologies for it. I'm not a church person. But I found a home in here. That's what you need. Where you can go, no matter who you are, and find a home. If we start making everything, I don't, listen, I'm not here to blow the trumpet for my church. I'm not. I'm just trying to keep it real. And anybody that knows me will tell you that's how I am. What I'm trying to make you understand is this. No matter who you are, when you walk through that door, you become the same. That's what church is. No matter where you go, when you come here, you feel that you belong. You see, there are some people who go to church after about two weeks, you just don't, you just don't belong. Because all of a sudden, everybody looking at you, her hair look funny, her dress is short. Oh no, why she walking like that? They look at you so much that you know they're looking at you. You can't fool when people looking at you, you know they're looking at you. Yes. Don't make you fool yourself like they're looking at you. Now you don't feel comfortable. Because now you're checking yourself. I tell, listen, when you go anywhere, you're going to look like where you're coming from. So if you come from a lifestyle that you're dressed like this or whatever, and you worry about it, you shouldn't be looking in the first place. And the men, especially if the men are complaining, the men are no business. Why you? How did you see? You're looking at a short dress. What are you looking for? But what I'm making you understand is this: when people stay around you long enough, they can adapt to the environment that they are in now. But when they come first. You don't come looking at them every five minutes trying to figure out, right. oh God, I, I, oh God, she, she is showing everything. You shouldn't be looking, close your eyes. And I keep telling people, I tell you, that's showing everything will make men come to church anyway. So men come to look at pretty women. I'm telling you, I used to do it. So you got to say, listen, so you can't sit down there and complain about that. But what I'm trying to make you say, in the process of looking at pretty women, you find the Holy Spirit. That's it. Something, something provokes you to change. <laughs> We see, because we come up here and we lie. Try to make sure we are the holiest of the holy. Yeah. Every day is a bad battle to stay where you need to be. Yeah. Especially when God starts working on you. Yeah. It's the battle. People do not understand. When you start living this life of saying you're preaching or pastor, that's why I keep telling you, pastor, no, I can't do it. Because when you start living this life, there's a battle that comes up with it. The way you look good in front of people, that's how you look good to other people. All those girls that didn't like you start talking about, he killed. So they got a crush on you. You can't get a crush on me. Now when I was out there in the street, he had a crush on me. Now that I brought my life together, he got a crush on me. He said, oh, oh. <laughs> you got to work on yourself to make sure you don't act on it. That's true. Yes. Because they're not going to fool you. A man is a man. Yeah. It takes special discipline and special grace of God not to act on some things. You know she's fine. But all of a sudden now, you kill me. You came too much. If you had come, just a year ago, just one year ago, we can have this conversation. But it's just, right now, you can't pull me back where I don't want to go. Exactly. Exactly. But that's part of what it takes to be great. Ordinary people have to make sacrifices and do the extra. So I didn't know, I didn't see this message was not the way I wrote it. I didn't know I was going to go, but I'm going to just come and I'm going to flow with it. So on, the, on behalf of the Ebenezer Williams Empowerment Project and the children we are trying to give, the life we are trying to give them, uh, I want to say thank you so much for your support. I want to say we do not take you guys for granted. And it shows me what family is. If you want a definition of family, new life in the city.
is the definition of fun. And, uh, on behalf, and I know I'm speaking kindly, um, the patriarch of my family would not reject me saying on behalf of my family, the Abel Aloba family in Nigeria, we thank you guys, we appreciate you guys, and uh, we hope this marriage lasts forever. We thank you guys, we appreciate you, and God bless all of you.